An essential part of understanding the airwater system is to understand what happens if you mix two airflows adiabatically. So no energy transferred from the surrounding to the mixing and no energy transferred from the, uh, these airflows to the surrounding. So adiabatic mixing. To understand that we need to make mass balances and an energy balance. And we have two components and thus we can make two mass balances. So we have the system here, two airflows, G1 and G2, meets and mixes adiabatically to a third stream, G3. What happens? Well, we have two components and we start with the mass balance for air. What unit should we use? Can we use volume? No, we can't use volume because the temperature might change. And if you have a gas, the volume changes. Uh, so we must use kilograms per second. So then the mass balance becomes really simple. It's just G1 plus G2 equals G3. What about the mass balance for water then? Well, you have a water content X in each flow. And if you multiply G with X, what unit do you get then? Well, G is in kilogram of dry air per second, and X is kilogram of water per kilogram of dry air. So if you multiply G with X, you get kilogram of water per second. So the mass balance becomes G1 times X1 plus G2 times X2 equals G3 times X3. What about the energy balance? Well, we express the enthalpy H as kilojoules per kilogram of dry air. So if you multiply H with G, you get kilojoules per second, and that's a good unit for uh, energy balance. Never use temperature as an energy balance unit because that simply doesn't work. So what does the energy balance become? Well, it's simply G1 times H1 plus G2 times H2 equals G3 times H3. A nice feature with the Molière diagram is that if you have adiabatic mixing and you find the two points of the two airflows in the Molière diagram, the solution, the result of the mixture will be on a straight line between the two. An important thing here is that the mixing line should be above this 100% humidity line. So if the mixing line goes something like this, then we're in trouble because then at certain mixture relations between the two airflows, there is too much water and we will have condensation. And so if the mixing line goes below the 100% relative humidity line, then we can't really be sure what happens. But okay, if the mixing line goes above the 100% the humidity line, how do you find the solution? Well, you do it by making a mass balance of water and or making an energy balance. Making a mass balance of water, you can find out the X and making an energy balance, you can find the, the enthalpy. So if you make both a mass balance of water and an energy balance of, uh, of the system and draw the solution in graphically in a Molière diagram, you can actually check your calculations because the X and the, and the H gives you a point and if that isn't on the line then something is wrong in your calculation. If it's very close to the line it could simply be that you have some problems with uh, rounding errors and things like that.